Mineral King started out for me as a point on a map that was an area that was understudied by previous geologists. And I looked and I said, oh, there's a road. It's way up into the Sierra. All right, so welcome to the intersection of Highway 198, which keeps going up this way to Sequoia National Park. Where we're gonna go is up the famous Mineral King Road with its 698 switchbacks. And of course the riding is a lot of fun when you're going around uh, hairpin turns 90% of the way. Scratching this road 26 miles into the heart of the Sierra was a huge undertaking, but the geology of that area is unique. And early speculators recognized that the precious metals there were unlike anything else in the Sierra Nevada. It's gonna be a lot of granite until we get up into the Mineral King rocks. Traveling through miles of granite on the way up to Mineral King, how do you recognize granite? Well, often it weathers into these nice dome-like uh, structures. Across the canyon here, you can see some of the, even under the uh, oaks, you can see that doming of the granites all the way up to the top of the ridge. So quartz and one or two feldspars make up granites typically, and the interlocked crystals tell us it's an igneous rock. We're pulled along uh, the side of the road here. If you're uh, driving and you notice sort of dark patches and some of the granites along the road, what you're seeing is an example of mingling of two magmas. These dark sort of domains are what we call mafic, and then the, the main granitic magma here, felsic is the term, the mafic magma and the felsic. So we're at another location about uh, nine miles up the road and looking at a lot of mafic magma here. You can see it's very dark. This is all large scale mingling of magmas. And this whole area is at the edge of two granites. On the map here, these confetti patterns signify granitic rocks and the ages of them are shown in blue here in terms of how many millions of years old they are. Essentially we drove from a very early geology in the west into what is sort of the midlife of the Sierra Nevada Batholith here where Mineral King is. If we kept driving to the east or if we hiked to the east, the rocks even get younger as you go toward Mount Whitney and the final crystals of a granite that makes up Mount Whitney are about 85 million years old. Tomorrow what we're gonna do in the valley is look at the much narrower but much more geologically diverse corridor of metamorphic rocks, sedimentary rock, and volcanic rocks that make up the heart of the Mineral King Valley. Last night, we camped on 98 million year old granodiorite. Today we'll be going into the Mineral King area where we're looking at the roof pendant. And the roof pendant is this remnant of much older rock hanging down, sort of sandwiched between these two granite bodies here and here. And it has been protected from erosion. One of the things that's awesome to think about is that six to seven miles of rock has been eroded off of the surface that we are presently standing on, weathered away and transported into the Great Valley, great for agriculture. With the ranger station off to the west, and then the Mineral King Valley is just up here about a mile. And the reason we've stopped here is this is the transition from granite on this side and the Mineral King roof pendant, which is what we'll see in the valley. Behind me is a 98 million year old granodiorite, and I'm gonna walk a few feet this way. And this rock under my left hand is a volcanic rock that was erupted 135 million years ago. A neat feature is the scour marks of glaciers. When they passed this rock and sculpted it, show the direction that the ice was moving as it crossed this rock headed to the west. So we're a few miles up oh, car.
Mineral King is coming into view. And one of the first things you'll notice is the color of the rocks changes dramatically on the skyline. You have reds and grays, browns, colors we haven't seen anywhere on the trip. What makes Mineral King special is the variety of rocks all concentrated in one small area. Things from the Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, it's a larger swath of Earth history than the entirety of all of the miles of granite we drove through on the way up here. Mineral King is a time capsule in a sense. Here we are, we're finally in the valley. We're standing on top of the roof pendant and we're gonna go look at some of the rocks brought down to us by the glaciers. We found some nice big rocks here. Let's go over and look at this one. What I love about these big rocks that come out of the high points in the valley is that they sort of bring a story down to us and we can sit in the sunny meadow here and enjoy it. This is a volcanic rock and it has a real strong grain to it. It's been folded and deformed and you can see examples of how one layer here goes around, wraps around and is folded all the way back. This rock is felsic, and so it would have been a very violent volcanic eruption that produced it. One thing I like about the valley here is you can easily get a sense of how rich and varied the geology is just by scanning the, the ridges around you. So if we look out to the north from where I am, you can see a, a number of different rocks exposed on the ridge line. There's the volcanic rocks we saw this morning, the orange rocks, are another set of sedimentary rocks. The white bit is a marble, and then the main muddy brown rock is the shales and slates that make up the bottom of the valley that have been largely pushed out by glaciers. From the road, this looks like an ordinary pile of rubble, but in fact, this is what's left over after glaciers carved out the Mineral King pendant to create the valley about 11 to 13,000 years ago. Up close, what you can see is that all of the rocks around in the valley are represented here. The vulnerable rocks that were making up the Mineral King roof pendant were easily fractured and peeled away from the surrounding granites. And that allowed us to have glaciers carve a long north-south valley. The river that comes through the valley is continuing the legacy of erosion that was started with glacial sculpting. Once you get down in the water, you can really see the color of the rocks come out, which shows the variety of geology in the Mineral King Roof Pendant. For example, the grays, the slates, or all those granites we drove through yesterday. You can see examples of those here in the river. A volcanic rock with a little more variety in its sort of felsic composition showing through or the dark color of a gabbro, showing sort of a green-gray color. So what kind of rock is this? Rhodite. It's asphalt. That's what you drove in on. <laughs> Let's take a peek at the geologic map. So the rocks I was pointing out on the ridge today are actually shown as these blues and blue-green colors here next to the granite. So those rocks together form this diversity of marine environments, deep sea sedimentary environments, and violent volcanic eruptions. It's just a snippet across this part of the pendant. There's a lot more geology in the valley to the south. We've turned our gaze to the south end of the Mineral King Valley here. We can see Florence Peak and Vandiver Mountain as sort of prominent backdrop. The red rocks that you see are the continuation of the Mineral King roof pendant heading up toward Farewell Gap. We're looking at the east side of the canyon. At a light gray marble, it shows how rocks have been tipped up on end, which can be traced along the wall of the canyon down as we go farther to the north. Underneath Empire Mountain, you see it plunge down is an example of a marine limestone that was formed in an ancient ocean that would have been warm and teeming with life. How I got into it is a mixture of timing and being good at observing rocks in the natural world and recognizing that I was happy doing it. We work on these vast scales of time and huge distances and the world is not as 
fixed as we view it now when the continents have moved around and places up here in the canyon were forming when the North American continent was much closer to the equator. What keeps me coming back is the possibilities just keep unfolding. A lot of what I do is I take Mineral King and try to connect the unique package of rocks here to other places. Mineral King is like a puzzle piece in the Sierra with a lot of the other puzzle pieces separated by many, many miles. And if you connect them, they all help us understand some of the earliest histories of the geology around here before the area was engulfed by the copious granites that intruded and sort of built what we now know as the Sierra Nevada. We all have awareness of the landscape around us and that is the fundamental geologist's eye. And there's nothing that says you have to have a degree in geology to sit down and enjoy the rocks and start to pick them up. Colors, textures, these are all the things geologists look at to really tell stories about the connections, the big connections of rocks. Mineral King as it stands is a fantastic resource in that it wasn't mined heavily, but it was the interest of miners that brought our awareness to sort of the unique mix of rocks that are in the valley. The best thing to do is obviously come up here and see it for yourself. As for me, I'm retracing my route back through 26 miles of granites and granodiorites, and maybe someday you might bump into me up in the valley.